What's up, everybody? It's your friend Val Varia from the Autism News Network, and right now I'm with the beautiful, marvelous Ashley. <laughs> Hi, good night to meet you all. <laughs> so. There's a lot of uh, curiosity with this superstar, this leading <laughs> leading man right here. Yes. What is this? Sure. So this is an example of something that folks might see out on the beaches here in Charleston, where it's pretty common for turtles to be nesting. So what these are is a way for fishermen to dispose of any uh, excess fishing line or hooks and things that they aren't going to be using anymore. They can dispose of them right in here off the beaches, and that helps keep it from tur keep turtles from ingesting those on accident. Hmm. Sounds sounds cool. Yeah. What would you guys uh, educate the, the visitors? So we do a lot to try to educate our guests on maintaining and being good stewards to the environment is the way that we like to think of it. So this is, for example, one way that you can uh, be a good steward for your environment. It's really common for animals to be ingesting things that they shouldn't be be ingesting in the wild. They eat things on accident, like the uh, fisher, fishing lines and things. And that's unfortunately where some of our sea turtles are rescued for this reason. And then they end up here in our care. So it's a full circle way that we can educate the public on ways that they can take care of the environment. And there's things all throughout the aquarium here <coughs> that help us educate the guests on what the best ways to do, or the best things that you can do um, to take care of your uh, surroundings. <laughs> mm, I see. So it's not just like the, it's not just like y'all to educate them. It should be us as well who is, who are visiting the sea, like the, the seashores. It's not just the, just, I think the aquarium here has its reason behind it. So since myself, I've been visiting the um, Philippine counterpoint of SC Aquarium, which is the Manila Ocean Park. Yeah. I also have this, a little experience, like a little relevance to this experience that we have right now. I think you nailed it though. It really is about, you know, what we can do, but also what you can do. You know, when, if you're educated, it's the, uh, on the best ways to treat the environment around you. The best thing you can do is share that knowledge with others and make sure that when you're out in your communities that everybody is paying attention to what they're doing and being mindful of our oceans. So, with the generation right now is, we call it the social media generation. Fake news, false news existed nowadays. How would you guys encourage, how would you guys uh, raise their concern? And how would you guys correct them? So I think what we always try to do here at the aquarium is lead with science and lead with, you know, transparency and truth about what we're doing. So, and what, a lot of uh, what that comes down to, especially with, you know, when it comes to are the animals happy about maybe the trash that's in the ocean. So, and, you know, there's science that can prove how, like, what that effect is having on the fish, on the ecosystems as a whole, and also how that can maybe affect humans as well. You know, the more trash that's in the ocean that can be ingested by fish, we eat those fish, and then we, in turn, are ingesting microplastics. So I think the best thing that we all can do is just lead with science and, you know, lead with the facts and make sure that we're being conscious of what's going on and that we're observing all the different uh, outlets and stories that are out there so that you can have a good, well-rounded view of what's happening. What makes the South, Car South Carolina Aquarium very special and inspiring and inclusive? So, well, what I think makes the aquarium so inspiring, um, I grew up here in Charleston and have recently moved back and I remember coming to the aquarium as a child. And so now I get to work here and really tell all the good stories that we're doing. And I think what makes us so special is that we focus on local wildlife and we also focus on rehabilitation and release. So our sea turtle hospital is really important to the community. It, you know, we are rescuing threatened and endangered sea turtles, and sea turtles are really important to Charleston. They're really prevalent in our oceans. Um, yeah, I think that that's what I find most inspiring about the aquarium. And one of the most inclusive things about the aquarium is that 
we do everything we can to make sure that everybody has a wonderful experience here at the aquarium. Uh, for example, one of our newer initiatives that started a few years ago is that we've partnered with Culture City. So we have uh, sensory inclusive bags that you can check out at our um, information desk when you arrive, and they include things like noise canceling headphones and maps of where in the aquarium we have quiet zones and where you can you know, have the best experience for you. We also try to be really inclusive with making sure that our space is open to everybody and that we're welcoming to everybody. We were recently recognized as a um, safe zone through uh, the Charleston, I believe, uh, the Charleston County Police Department. So we are considered a safe zone for LGBTQ population, for the LGBTQ population, and, and we're very proud to support everybody that wants to see the aquarium. How do you deal? How do you guys deal with a natural disaster? Sure. So, for example, a natural disaster that's really common here in the Low Country is hurricanes. So we all know when hurricane season rolls around that we might have some storms. And we have a really extensive plan here. If we are going to be hit with a really uh, large hurricane, something that might require evacuation, we have all sorts of systems in place. We have a, a ride-out emergency team who will stay here in the building 24-7. They'll camp out here so that there's people always monitoring the animals in the tanks. We have backup generators that for the smallest or largest power outage, we're always able to keep our filtration systems running and keep the t uh, tanks at the best temperature for our animals as well. So, and luckily being right here on the coast, when they built this building, they took hurricanes into consideration. So there, we do have a basement that's built to be flood proof and we're always constantly reevaluating what we're doing so that we can ride out natural disasters in the safest way for our animals. All right, so I will say salamat, means thank you in Filipino, and mabuhay po kayo, so long live, so thank you. <laughs>